this public hearing of the Committee on Sustainable Development Goals, Innovation and Futures Thinking, joint with the Committee on Trade, Commerce and Entrepreneurship, is called to order. In today's hearing, we'll discuss the speech I delivered on February 6, 2023, calling for an investigation on the violation of the Vaporized Nicotine Regulation Act in relation to vape flavors and designs, which in particular are very attractive to the youth. Joining us today is our Majority Floor Leader, Joel Villanueva, who uh, even during the deliberations uh, on the said measure was very vocal about his concerns uh, on the products that would be attractive to the youth, particularly the age uh, and the flavors. And uh, I believe that uh, uh, our majority floor leader would like to say a few words. Sir, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Chair. Magandang uh, hapon po sa ating lahat, to my esteemed colleagues, sa ating pong, uh, mga resource persons. At the um, outset, let me take this um, opportunity po to express uh, my appreciation to our chairperson, Senator Pia Cayetano, for uh, bringing into light this uh, alarming uh, situation concerning uh, the uh, uh, implementation of the Vaporized Nicotine Regulation Act. At nakakaalarma po yung mga violations na nakita agad natin at uh, nagtetret ng uh, na on the uh, uh, health and well-being of our people, especially po yung ating mga kabataan. And the uh, Senate immediately moved to adopt, and I, let me put that on record, to adopt a, an, an, an unnumbered resolution to address it head on. The law that we passed last Congress uh, could not have been clearer. Section 12, letter J reads, the sale of uh, vaporized nicotine and non-nicotine products and novel tobacco products that are packaged, labeled, presented, or marketed with flavor descriptors that are proven to unduly appeal particularly to minors shall be prohibited. Napakaklaro po niyan. Sabi pa dito, a flavor descriptor is presumed to unduly appeal to minors if it includes a reference to a fruit, candy brand, dessert, or cartoon character. And yet, as presented by our dear colleague, the chairperson of this committee, Senator Pia Cayetano, there is an alarming uh, proliferation of vape flavors in the market, which is a clear violation of the law. A simple uh, search in online shopping sites like yung, uh, Shopee or Lazada uh, would yield to a uh, plethora of options, uh, Madam Chair, ranging from fruits, pastries, coffee, yakult, and other drinks, including gulaman na, Madam Chair, desserts like cheesecake and ube leche flan, candies like hau-hau, and even halu-halo and turon. Dinaig pa, uh, uh, Madam Chair, yung buffet sa dami ng flavors. Kaya hindi po katanggap-tanggap ito, itong ganitong tahasang paglabag sa batas, lalo na po at uh, ang kapakanan at kalusugan ng marami nating kabataan Ang maapektuhan. We reiterate our call, Madam Chair, on the uh, concerned government agencies, especially the Department of Trade and Industry, to give us a clear and uh, definitive answers uh, in these proceedings as to why the proliferation of these uh, prohibited products was allowed. We also like to, an immediate resolution of this issue pursuant to the provisions of the law, even as we await the uh, recommendations of the committee. So again, maraming salamat, Madam Chair, at uh, full support po tayo dito. God bless you all. Thank you, Majority Floor Leader. Thank you for reiterating that provision of law uh, to point out that uh, there is a clear violation. No? Wala na siguro tayong kailangan pag-usapan, which is precisely why the Senate President, with uh, your honor support, uh, really... Uh, push for the immediate adoption of that resolution. Kasi wala na talagang kailangan pag-usapan, di ba? Kumbaga sa, even if we were a court of law, the, uh, we had the evidence, no? And uh, um, now, no, I'll take the opportunity and bahala na kayo, Majo, uh, stay as long as you want. And if you need to go, I know you'll be monitoring because you are concerned about this. But I'll take off uh, from where the majority floor leader uh, left off, no? Um our Honorable Majority Floor Leader read the provision of the law that very clearly 
uh, considers um, a a product uh, as um, considered to be enticing to the youth when it uses uh, fruits, uh, desserts, or other descriptors which are known to be connected with children. So, as I was saying earlier, uh, if this were a court of law, all you need to show is the evidence no, that uh, there is such a product and it's being sold, and therefore we then prove that there is a violation of the law. So, uh, I can now show some of these products. Uh, na, na alert ako nung sinabi ni, uh, parang he read my mind, but rest assured everybody, uh, we're not in cahoots. We just have the same concern. His Honor mentioned dessert, right? Dessert, no? You said you said dessert. And exacto yes, yung, yes. yung sample na nandito na hawak ko is a Korean dessert. Strawberry bingsu. So, ito siya. And my staff told me that um, if you open it, which I won't do now, I'll do it later probably, you don't even have to to use it um, as a vape, but just opening it, you'll already note the smell of it that is very enticing. So, ito pa lang, dessert. Eh, sinabi nung batas natin, bawal nga ang dessert. O, ito, dessert. Okay? So, mamaya, babasahin ko yung uh, address nung uh, uh, manufacturer or distributor nito. Kasi nga, violation talaga siya. Hinahanap ko lang yung salamin ko. There you go. So, I can actually say, uh, and FDA is here, I'll give you the floor later. Pero from what I know, mga packages, di ba kailangan very clear yung manufacturer and, uh, or distributor address o oh, wala, ni wala. So, violation din yon. Anyway, uh, another example is uh, watermelon cooler. So, fruit. Kung di pa ba natin alam na prutas to, uh, ayan, watermelon cooler. Kitang-kita rin. And then, um, for the accessories, uh oh, di ko alam, pero parang proud pa siya eh. Yung tatak na made in the Philippines, para bang proudly made in the Philippines, which to me, I'm not proud about. But anyway, it is what it is. Um, and then, in terms of accessories, uh, I made a statement, and I'll go through this a little bit in more detail later on, but in the bill that I filed, which was actually a draft that uh, was a collaborative effort with uh, Seatka and other, uh, the youth no, um, group that, that has been monitoring uh, this the dangers of vapes, the bill that I had filed in the 18th Congress a few years ago, very clearly also prohibited accessories of vape products, which would, effectively be promoting vapes and making it uh, making it attractive to children. O kung hindi pa ba attractive to, ito yung accessories, ito yung lalagyan. So meron siyang parang lanyard na pwede mong ihang sa neck mo and ang products, ang, ang product covers niya are candy bars and uh, a very well-known um, soft drink, di ba? So, ayan. Um... This is a sad state that we are in, uh, colleagues. No, and majority floor looks like he's about to cry because <laughs> this is this is the fate of our youth. No, na ito yung products on our market. Did you want to say something? You're yeah, don't, don't forget, uh, Senator Pia, yung cartoon character because that that uh, actually uh, got my attention when uh, you were delivering your uh, privileged speech when I saw my melody, which is my uh, daughter's favorite cartoon character. So. That really got my attention. And I and I made a statement that the three gentlemen that actively uh, um, that actively participated in in uh, in the interpolation of my privileged speech were his honor, the majority floor leader, the Senate president, and the minority floor leader, all have daughters, all have young kids. So uh yun nga ang kagandahan when we have a Senate that represents uh, different members of our society, and in this particular case, the youth, because they would immediately be, uh, we are all human beings, no? and uh, psychology tells us that we have a limited ability to focus on different things. So if we, if us, if we in the Senate were uh, busy, you know, reviewing laws, 
it's very possible that uh, hindi na attract si majority floor leader if I just mentioned fruits. But the fact that he saw, not to mention kasi hindi ko kumakain ng gulay yan. So kung gulay yung nabanggit ko, hindi niya mapapansin yun. No? Tsaka sino ba naman ang attracted kung nagkaroon tayo ng vapes na ang nandun eh, talong. No? It's not attractive. Uh, prutas, yes. Pero what got his attention was the Sanrio character because he has a daughter. And that's why I am grateful that... Uh, uh, this this uh, give this this situation gives us the opportunity to take it up now. So, um, without further ado, thank you again, Majority Floor Leader. Let me just proceed with um, uh, a few more inf uh, uh, some other information. Um, just to put this on record because it was covered in my privilege speech, but just very quickly, in 2012 we passed the RA10351 otherwise known as the syntax law, and this covered alcohol and cigarettes. And that is why in 2020, when I sponsored the new Syntax Reform Act, it now covered the new type of sin, the new type of sin products, which is heated, heated tobacco products and vapes. Kasi nga, in the earlier law, parang wala pa yun sa mundo natin, or nasa mundo na natin, but it wasn't in our realm. No, It wasn't an immediate concern. But in 2020, uh, Congress... Uh, well, the Senate in particular had a debate, do we ban or do we not ban, but we tax and regulate? And the decision was to tax and regulate, thus the Sin Tax Reform Act, because we would tax and regulate. And that is the purpose of this hearing, to find out if we are actually doing our job of regulating. Um, fast forward, shortly after 2020, uh, a new law was passed, and this is the... Vape, well, a, a shortcut name is Vape Law, RA 11900, uh, which overturned three major provisions of the Sin Tax Reform Act. These three provisions are uh, pegging the age at 21 years so that the youth really are protected uh, beyond 18. Um, FDA being the agency that would regulate these products. And third, is limiting the flavors to menthol and tobacco flavor. Uh, I say that these three major provisions were overturned because in the vape law, the age was changed from 21 to 18. The jurisdiction to regulate um, was transferred to DTI, and there was a more permissive provision on flavor. So the focus of this hearing really is on the flavors. And although I made it clear that the provision under the current law, which is the vape law, is more permissive, kasi dati, talagang ano lang eh, menthol and tobacco. So everything else is banned. Eh ngayon, ang nangyari sa vape law, which I opposed, is they expanded the definition to include basically allowed ang flavors with the exception of flavors that were attractive to the youth and then made descriptors like uh, um, uh, fruit flavors, uh, cartoons, and other candies, uh, which obviously we would know are, are um, uh, attractive to the youth. And now, Ganun na nga clear pa rin ang law and we still have very, very clear violations. So, I'd like to end my introduction by mentioning, and I will, I will read it into the record perhaps later na lang so we can give the floor to our guests who have taken the time to be here. But there are now articles and studies, peer-reviewed studies, that are saying that as many of the advocates have warned, be careful with claiming that these products are safer because it may not be safer at all. It may even be worse. And there are now studies that are saying that uh, there is more lung damage uh, to the lungs of people who vape than cigarettes. And I'll just cite those studies later on. And these are peer-reviewed studies, by the way. And there's a, uh, the alarm has been sounded in the UK. Uh, when I visited the UK specifically to study how they are approaching uh, the handling, how they dealt with the handling of this novel product, which was 
uh, vapes, uh, they told me that they have a slightly, and, and this is just my own words, no? a slightly permissive take on it because they're not worried about the youth taking it up because the youth in the UK, based on their data, have they have been successful in stopping the the youth from smoking. Therefore, the chances down na magshift sa vapes yung naninigaril yung bata is very low kasi nga they have already succeeded in making smoking not attractive to the youth. And the reason for this is because they have complied with, they have adopted many of the recommendations of the advocacy groups on uh, stopping smoking. This includes no point of uh, purchase display. So if you go into a retail store in London, which I did, I wanted to try to to see how how the cigarettes looks and the e-cigs, eh, walang point of purchase display doon. So, nakakalimutan ko. So, ganun ka-effective yun. You will not think of buying cigarettes kasi nakatago talaga. Only if you ask, will it be shown to you? And then, if I'm not mistaken, they also have plain, plain packaging. Tama ba? Oh, Dr. Yulis confirming. They have plain packaging. So, baliwala yung mga subtle and not subtle advertisings ng iba-ibang tobacco companies kasi plain packaging din lang naman and so on and so forth including of course yung um, specific uh, uh, educational campaign na ginawa nila nila for more than a decade so successful sila oh, pero ngayon and this is like two years since I've been to the two or three kasi I was there 2018 sorry more uh, 2019 so mag for four years na three and a half years since I was there now, I'm reading reports that says that the UK is alarmed by the number of young people who have been hospitalized because of vaping. So, hindi lang nag-vape, na hospitalized pa. So, I'm sad for them, no? Because uh, mali pala yung assumption nila na hindi magiging attractive sa bata. Kasi this industry works in a very devious way and this is how they work okay so enough with my uh, monologue uh, i just need to put that on record because our our uh, hearing will be immortalized uh, thanks to youtube and uh, and our media friends who cover it um and i want this to be something that people anyone of any age will of a mature age can understand, no? even teenagers. I want them to be able to understand this. So I always have to give a background and give context to what we're discussing. So let me go now to our uh, guest list. Yeah. Uh, we purposely limited this to the immediate group of uh, agencies that are involved in uh, um, NGOs or uh, non-government um, uh, advocates so that we can have, we can maximize the time no, and have very, we have we can have discussions that are on topic kasi di maiwasan minsan na off topic time because there's a lot to say and we usually have very interesting guests. So let's try to limit this and get to the bottom of all of this. So the two government agencies, well, three government agencies that are here, but of course FDA is part of DOH, uh, would be the Department of Trade, FDA and DOH. Um, and then after that, we will call on our medical experts and advocates, uh, SEATCA, uh, Philippine College of Chess Physicians, and our youth representatives. So I'll introduce each one of you as your, your time comes to speak. So let's now hear from the Department of Trade and Industry, represented by Assistant Secretary Anne Claire Cabochan. Um, for the record, we invited Secretary Pascual, but we understand that he's on an official trip uh, to Japan with the president. So uh, we we excuse him. Uh, we we have made known to him our concerns on this, and we we expect uh, and we we assume no, that he will be pro properly updated and brief. No, okay. So uh, who is going to speak? Is it Assistant Secretary? There you are. Okay. Thank you, Honorable Chairperson of the of the Senate Committee on Sustainable Development Goals, Innovation, and Futures Thinking, um, as well as Majority Floor Leader Senator um, Joel Villanueva. Yes. Sorry, I need to interrupt you. Sorry, uh, I just want to explain. No, um, 
the reason that the SDG committee is hearing this for those who are not aware para maintindihan niyo din uh, the SDG committee that I chair uh, overlaps all uh, many if not all of these concerns uh, obviously good health which is um, uh, SDG 3 yes. and uh, industry and jobs uh, is all covered here so that's why there is a, a overlap and uh, the the Senate president and the body deemed it best that uh, this committee hear it. So go ahead and proceed. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, the Department of Trade and Industry is pleased to share with the, this committee the department's initiatives on the implementation of Republic Act number 11900 or the Vaporized Nicotine and Non-Nicotine Products Regulation Act. RA 11900 lapsed into law on 25 July 2022. In accordance with the said law, the DTI issued Department Administrative Order number 22-16 or the Implementing Rules and Regulations of RA 11900. The IRR were published in two newspapers of general circulation. Thus, the DTI through the Consumer Protection Group began the enforcement of the of RA 11900, particularly the restrictions on the sale requirements on the product on product packaging restrictions on product communication advertisements and sponsorships. The DTI has conducted enforcement activities in the national capital region. In this enforcement activities, the violations we saw include selling within a 100 meter radius of facilities frequented by minors, two, selling vape with designs and flavor descriptors that are attractive to the youth, three, selling vape without the point of sale signage required under the law, four, selling vape without the required textual warning. The DTI issued show cost orders to these retailers at, that were all required to institute corrective actions and explain their infraction or face an administrative or criminal case. As for online stores, the Consumer Protection Group wrote the platforms directing them to ensure the compliance of sellers with the law. The CPG has likewise informed its regional and provincial offices to implement the law. It is expected that they will follow suit and moving forward, our enforcement activities will be intensified. The implementation of RA 11900 will be included in the conduct of regular monitoring and enforcement activities. Monthly reports from the Fair Trade Enforcement Bureau and from the regional operations, regional offices and provincial offices will be submitted to the Office of the Secretary. The Fair Trade Enforcement Bureau is the enforcement arm of the DTI, responsible for implementing various fair trade and industry laws, such as the Product Standards Law, Republic Act 4109, certain provisions of the Consumer Act 7394, RA 7581, or the Price Act, among others. In the event that there are cases for a violation of RA 11900, therefore, against manufacturers, distributors, importers, or retailers of vape products, the Fair Trade Enforcement Bureau, through its prosecution unit, will motu proprios file with the FTEB's adjudication division the appropriate formal charges against them pursuant to executive order number 913 and 292, or uh, the Administrative Code of the Philippines. Once the FTEB Adjudication Division receives the formal charge, it will then be raffled to an adjudication officer for hearing. Should the formal charge be meritorious, summons will be issued requiring respondents to file their verified and notarized answers within 10 working days from receipt thereof. Thereafter, the parties will submit their respective position papers within 15 days from the receipt of an order by the adjudication officer. If necessary, clarificatory hearings are held. After the filing of the party's position papers, decisions on the formal charge will be rendered within 15 days based on the evidence presented by the parties. As to the requirement on product registration, the law provided an 18-month transitory period for manufacturers or importers to comply. Nevertheless, even before the effectivity of the law, the Department, through the Bureau of Philippine Standards, has issued Department Administrative Order Number 22-06, 
series of 2022 or the technical regulation concerning the mandatory product certification of vaporized nicotine and non-nicotine products on 15th of June, 2022. This covers vape, the vapor product device, vapor product system, and heated tobacco product system. The DTI is now in the process of developing Philippine national standards for novel tobacco products to be used as reference in the supplemental regulation to align with the vape law. As for the product testing, our testing center is also able to test vape devices. In the absence of a BPS recognized testing laboratory, the PS licensed applicants or holders shall nominate a testing laboratory accredited by an accreditation body signatory to the International Laboratory Accreditation Corporation, ILAC, or Asia Pacific Laboratory Accreditation Corporation, APLAC, mutual recognition arrangements to conduct the product testing. The DTI has a strong partnership with the DOH, such as in the Pr Price Negotiation Board, the Technical Working Group for setting ma maximum drug retail prices for essential medicines, and in monitoring the prices and supply of medicines and medical devices. Thus, with our history of strong collaboration with the DOH, rest assured that the DTI through the Consumer Protection Group as its consumer protection arm remains committed to its duties under the law, um, even with the limitations on resources and manpower. Thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Chair. Madam Chair. Yes, yes, uh, MFL, please go ahead. Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, can I just, uh, uh, because I don't want to forget, this is the one, one, one question, two questions lang uh, with regard to the report of DTI. Go ahead. Can I just uh, immediately? Very, very short. Uh, Ma'am, thank you very much for your presence and uh, Thank you for that uh, report, and uh, you know I've been uh, I've been very uh, uh, sensitive lately with regard to monitoring compliance, and I know you're doing uh, your best, especially DTI. Although let me also place on record that I did not agree that DTI should uh, regulate this. I I was voting with the Senator Pia that the FDA should be the one uh, to uh, to be on that on, on top of this. Uh, uh implementation of the law but uh, it is what it is now and i also wanted to put on record that uh i also voted no to flavors because of the fact that uh, as mentioned a while ago by our chair uh in america uh 500 companies yung nag apply uh for about 55,000 flavors and yet na deny po silang lahat hanggang ngayon na problema pa sila no but hindi yun yung point ko ang point ko lang po yung again i go back to yung uh, monitoring compliance I just wanted to find out yung specific there's 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 a specific office diba ng DTI right now who is responsible in monitoring may may, may we know if that's an, uh, correct uh, ma'am Madam Chair if I may address um the majority Please purpose. go ahead um Mr Senator um it is um the Fair Trade Enforcement Bureau of the Department of Trade and Industry uh, which monitors for for the national capital region but for the um outside the ncr our pre provincial offices would have a consumer welfare desk um and their personnel will also do the monitoring outside the ncr sir okay a very quick question lang ilan na po yung uh, may mga reports na no violations that have been uh, received uh by dti um your Honor, for as far as violations, because we have um, monitored so far, um, I think there have been um, 23 firms. So a total of um, 16 uh, show cost orders were issued by the Fair Trade Enforcement Bureau, sir. Okay, okay, uh, 16. And uh, uh, for the record, po, yung total number of uh, vaporized nicotine brands or products that have been uh, duly registered and uh, issued certification by uh, the BPS and the uh, flavors being allowed to be sold in the market. Uh, ilan po yung total number nito? 
na nasa DDI. Um, if I may, um, Your Honor, the product certification scheme is not yet um, in place. There is a transitory period of 18 months. So, um, oh, wala pa. Wala Where are pa we there? Sir. Um, so right now, what because there was already a department administrative order that was issued, it's a technical regulation issued by DTI in 2022, but it only covered um, vape products. So now we will have to adopt um, a na Philippine national standard to cover the novel tobacco products because we have no such standard at this time. So that will be the reference in the technical regulation. So the target of DTI, because um, we are now doing the fast track um, of, of such a standard is that within the first semester of this year, um, we will have issued the Philippine national standard on novel tobacco products and the um, circular that will now amend um, the DAO that only covers vape will also be issued, sir. Sige, mabilis lang po, ano, kasi this concerns uh, everyone, especially uh, when uh, Senator Cayetano, Pia Cayetano, delivered her privilege speech. Kasi if you check online platforms now, uh, very easy, Shopee, Lazada, it's so easy, no? you will see there an overwhelming uh, number of prohibited uh, flavors of vape being uh, sold in the open uh, para kasi yung DTI um gusto namin malaman ano ba talaga ginagawa eh, may authority po kayo to take down yung non-compliant online sellers uh, and order the immediate recall ban or uh, a seizure from public uh, sale or distribution of these products gusto natin malaman how how is it how are you coordinating with these platforms um in the uh, Uh, for example, immediate suspension of uh, tra trading of, of the said products. Gusto ko lang ipakita, uh, Madam Chair, no? Kasi kitang-kita dito yung liability nitong uh, nagbebenta nitong produkto na ito. Yung isa pong store dito nakalagay, we saw online, has sold about, nakalagay po dito, has sold about 14,300 of the products already. 14,300 products already were sold. So, yung tanong po dyan, uh, you know, kasi mahirap, mahirap tanggapin na it's happening right before our very eyes. Very easy to to access, very easy to, to buy these products that are prohibited. So, again, uh, we wanted to find out, no? Ito ho ba? Yung, kutulad nitong binabanggit ko na to, ito ho ba yung uh, kasama na dun sa may Shokos uh, order from DTI, ma'am? Your Honor, um, as far as online platforms are concerned, um, the DTI also sent letters to the online platforms like Shopee and Lazada, um, asking them to comply with, with the requirements of the law. Uh, actually, there's a joint administrative order that was issued um, last year that governs um, online transactions. So we reiterated that and for online platforms, um, We have already, um, the Fair Trade Enforcement Bureau has already also um, issued show costs to 44 firms for online transactions, 44 sellers. Sige. Ma'am, yes. sige po, I'll, I'll, I'll let go of this. I just wanted to to make sure that you are all working and uh, protecting the uh, best interest of our people, especially our young people who, yes, whom we consider the hope of the nation. And mm. the paalala ko lang sa Section 19 of the law, Meron pong provision dyan that DTI shall have the power to issue an order directing that a non-compliant website, web page, online social media account, or other similar platform be taken down. Meron din po doon sa penal provisions dyan ng law, nasa section 23 naman, yung online sellers, distributors, online platforms that are non-compliant na right before our very faces, eh talaga tahas ang uh, binabastos ang ating mga batas na ipinasa meron po dyan sa section 23 that uh, pwede ho yan na uh, i-order ng DTI to immediately suspend the sale of products and shall be liable for the fines and penalties imposed yun lang po uh, Madam Chair just wanted to make sure that uh, our systems are working and uh, we are here to help ma'am in the DTI Uh, despite hindi kami agree nun, but uh, we are here to empower you. Kung may kailangan po kayo, let, let us know. But uh, if not, 
then probably we should really consider uh, FDA to come in and uh, find out kung may anong pwede ba nating magawa. Salamat po, Madam Chair. Maraming salamat sa DTI representative. Thank you. Thank you, um, Majority Floor Leader. Actually, my... Uh... My questions are also along that line. Maybe we will get clarity, uh, further clarity, sana clarity and not confusion, uh, when we ask these kind of questions and then also listen to FDA. Kasi uh, what your last statement na, are our systems working? Doon na lang tayo eh, di ba? Ang daming paliwanag, which, which the ASEC naman, Anne, is simply just telling us what they put in the rules and in the law. Some of those things are not in the law. Uh, rules na lang yon. Pero is it adding to bureaucracy? Because for me, as a lawyer, I understand the concept of due process. But there is also a concept of, of, of plain danger. And law enforcement have the right to step in and protect people from danger. So I want to be able to um, validate uh, uh, these practices that we have. Uh, with an eye towards either accepting it, that it's going to be a slow process, or recognizing that there is room for change if we really want to um, be able to protect our youth. Kasi pag sinabi mong binibenta sa harap ng schools, and that is one of the examples that ASEC gave, are you telling me na pababayaan nating binibenta yan sa harap ng schools, magbibigay pa tayo ng letter ng show cause, may X number of days, babalikan pa tayo, eh nakikita mo na binibenta sa harap ng school. Nakikita mo namang Korean dessert. May pinagkaiba pa ba yung Korean, yung American, yung Filipino dessert? Ano yung, ba, ano yung sinabi mo? May sinabi ka kanina, Madjo, kakanin flavor ba? May sinabi ka, agulaman. Sabi ko, oh, may ganun. Di ko alam, pati gulaman pala, meron. Watermelon cooler. May picture na ng watermelon. May pangalan pa na watermelon. Ano pa ba yun? So, how, how? attorney, Chair, attorney, how, how attorney por, por, portion kula. Is that correct? Portion kula? Portion kula is here. You're from the DTI, di ba? So, are you prepared to address the concern raised by the majority floor leader? Na, are our systems working? It might be working because you're telling me we're following the letter of the rules and the law. Pero patawarin. Yung teenager na yan o yung 12 years old na yan in track nila, baka lolo na by the time. Finalo nga natin yung letter of the rules and letter of the laws, but we created too many processes that we are not able to save the youth. So that's my question. That's our question. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Under our existing rules uh, of procedure, procedure, Madam Chair, uh, uh, we can also confiscate. We have the power to... There you go. Also. Oh, have you confiscated, ASEC? Have you confiscated? No, based on the... Enforcement operations, we have not confiscated. Then why not? Why not? Eh, sinabi mo na, report nyo sa amin, and I took note of it. You have 16 show cause orders. May I know if this 16 include yung selling near the schools? Kasi yun yun, di ba? I mean, yeah. yung, yung inexplain mo na these are the different types of violations. I'm not sure if you meant these are the violations defined by law or these are the violations that were actually seen by your law enforcement they have been seen, They've been seen. so may violations na selling near the school may violations na may descriptor so kat katulad yung watermelon hmm. or descriptor yon tapos yung selling without graphic health warning and what was the other violation a textual warnings and point of sale point of sale what exactly point of sale sorry what about no. point of sale no Ah, the, ano, the, the, ano, the, the required statements at point of sale, yes. no, na cannot sell to minors and so on and so forth. So you found this. Opa, no, picture taking, tapos submission, tapos show cause. Es, e mismong lawyer nyo ang nagsasabing you have the power to confiscate. Parang kulang naman sa briefing yung enforcement nyo. Um, Madam Chair, um, that is um, exactly what we have been discussing because under the the department administrative the department order on on our process for violations of fair trade. Sandali, laws, uh, for the record, ha. Pinunas po nasa na ni majority floor leader yung mukha niya. Kung ginawa ko yon, tanggal na lahat ng makeup ko, okay? 
Ma that Madam is a Chair, sign. I have to put that on record because that is a sign of frustration. Okay? Yan, yan. Yan. Wala na kaming magawa. Uh, Dahil kami naman yung mga dissenting, dissenting uh, senador. Di kami nagmumura dito. Di kami nagpipilit kami hindi magtaas ng boses. So hanggang ganyan, ganyan na lang kami. Hanggang pisil-pisil na lang kami ng mukha namin. My God, Lord, and I do not call the name. Sorry, sorry, Majo. I just need to say, my mom gets mad at me when she hears me. Well, you're your good friend, my brother, if I say my God. But because do not call the name of the Lord in vain, Dao. Pero I'm not calling the Lord's name in vain. I am actually calling out to the Lord for guidance. Because hindi ko na alam yung gagawin ko. If you are telling me, which you seem to be about to tell me, asik an, and then I'll give the floor to you right away, Majo that uh, your administrative order stated blah, blah, blah. Eh, kayo nagsulat nun eh. Hindi naman ganun yung batas na ginawa namin. Masama na nga yung batas na ginawa namin, lalong pinasama pa ng admin order. Naligil lang isang katutak na requirements. Samantalang your lawyer is telling me, telling us, that you have the right to confiscate. Oh, Majo, the floor is yours. Yeah, uh, Madam Che, una, kanina, in-elaborate natin yung powers ng DTI, binanggit natin yung uh, Section 23, binanggit natin yung Section 19, etc. Uh, binanggit nyo, Madam Chair, na tahasang paglabag sa batas, nasa mukha na natin, ano pang gagawin natin, chokos pa rin, etc. And just to put on record, Madam Chair, isa na lang, para baka kasi mas... In-depth pa tayong mag-aral dito sa Senado than the implementing agency. Yung binabanggit ko po kanina na uh, 14,300 na, na products na ang nasold, Madam Chair. Ang pangalan po ng uh, uh, name ng brand ay WASPE, W-A-S-P-E. At yan po, madali nyong hanapin sa Shopee, reseller, Shopee ho yan. Ang uh, pangalan po is Vape in law, Shopee seller. Vape in law, V A P E I N L O, Shopee seller. Nakabasi po sila sa San Nicolas, San Nicolas, Manila. Ayan po para humatulungan hu namin kayo. Kami po dito tuwing maghihiring, nag-aaral po kami at uh, ginagawa namin lahat ng amin magagawa para makatulong. Sana po magtulungan tayo at sana gawin din natin yung trabaho natin. Salamat, Madam Chair. Thank you for that, uh, Majority Floor Leader. Uh, Attorney Porshenkula and Asek uh, Kobuchan, uh, I will go to to FDA and DOH. I'll give you time. To, I, I, I'm, I'm sure you have something more to say. I'll give you time to discuss, to tell me what your clear position is, because if this is going to be your position, then we really have a problem. We will never get but, to the bottom of this Chair, in the lifetime Chair, of these young people. Yes, Miss, yes, Majority Floor Leader. Yeah. Yes, Madam Chair, gusto kong sabihin, yung binanggit ko po na yun, may violation na po sila. Violation nila, nagbebenta sila ng flavored vape. Ang flavor po ay taho, ice cream, mixed berries, coffee, lychee. Baka lang po akala niyo, wala pa po silang violation. Right before our very eyes, may violation na po. Salamat, Madam Chair. Thank you, thank you. So that's very clear, no? I mean, ang, ang kagandahan naman itong batas na to, which I already considered watered down, but we were still able to make sufficient interventions that clearly define what is what are violations. Wala tayong sina, hindi vague yun. We said dessert flavors that are, are named as desserts, that are named as fruits, that are attractive to kids and these are what we consider to attractive to kids kasi nga baka subject pa to discussion what are attractive to kids kaya sinabi natin doon cartoons desserts uh, ano nga ba yung sa cartoons desserts fruits yun na nga violation na nga siya violation na talaga siya um anyway like i said i will give Attorney Porshinkula of DTI and ASEC opportunity to talk. You can talk in the side, you can go out. It's your choice, no? Um, but in the meantime, before I give the floor to FDA, uh, I, I want to, to educate all of us, okay? Let's, be, let's all be educated. Even I continue to be educated. I, I need to research. I need to ask my team, what is the latest jurisprudence, okay? So on the plain view doctrine, which is a case in 2019, Argana versus People. This is the doctrine. Law, enforce, law enforcement officers in search of evidence, when he is in a position from which he can 
view a particular area. O di siyempre, kung tindahan niyan at nandun ka naman nakapasot, it's a public store, lahat naman pwedeng pumasok. So siya ay nasa isang posisyon para ma-view niya, makikita niya kung ano yung binibenta doon. Number two, discovery of the evidence in plain view is inadvertent. Hindi nang kalkal, hindi pa kailangan pumasok doon sa bodega nila, doon sa kung anumang lugar, mag-open ng drawers, mag-open ng cabinet. It's in plain view. Pagtingin mo, nandun. Okay? And third, it is immediately apparent that the item he observes may be evidence of a crime, contraband, or otherwise subject to, and I cannot read this word, subject to, subject to seizure. O eh, hindi pa ba crime yun? Di ba? Hindi pa ba contraband yun or subject to seizure? O ano pa ba? Now, if this don't happen to be in plain view, then I understand. Di ba? Uh, I don't know. Um, there, are, there are products that are really not in plain view. You have to enter and you have to open up. In plain view nga. So, allow me to educate all of us. This is the plain view doctrine. Your rules do not the, have the power of law if there is a law and jurisprudence that is very clear. Bali, wala yung rules nyo. Okay, I will move to FDA and think about what you're saying to me because I'm not happy with what I'm hearing from DTI. FDA, who is going to speak? Ms. Cabrido, is that correct? You are from, you are the Division Chief Center for Cosmetic and Household Urban Hazard Substances Regulation and Research. Uh, on record, off, for the record, where is your FDA Director General? Because uh, the invitation was sent to him. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon also to our uh, Honorable uh, Majority Floor Leader. Um, we got a message, uh, Your Honor, um, Madam Chair, that our DG is um, currently uh, had a health um, condition uh, for health reasons. He will not be able to join with us today. Isha pwedeng mag ano, online? But Three he, years ago, wala ngang online. Ngayon, pwede naman mag online eh. Nakalive ba siya? But he commits, your, uh, Madam Chair, to attend the next hearing, uh, Madam Paano Chair. Paano walang next hearing? Can I, can I remind all the secretaries and heads of agencies that if you will send your subordinate, it is usually acceptable, but common courtesy, let my office know so that if I have a question, if I'd like to say hello to you, if I'd like to direct my question to you, you can let me know. In the case of the Secretary of uh, Trade, uh, nagsabi naman, and I have no problem with that. Pero ang DG ng FDA, hindi man lang nag-abalang, magsabi sa akin na hindi siya makakapunta. Nagtanong pa ako off the record earlier ni hindi nyo rin alam kung bakit wala siya. Ngayon nyo lang nalaman dahil sinabi kong alamin nyo. So next time sana, and hindi kasalanan ng subordinates yun, kasalanan ng mga principal yun. Okay, go ahead. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, on the introduce na rin yung mga kasama mo para if uh, Majority Floor Leader also has questions. He knows that along with Ms. Uh, Cabrido is uh, Attorney Vanessa Legasto who is nandito ba ang pangalan mo? Diyan ko nalang babasahin. Attorney 4 for Legal Service Support Center and Mr. Miraflor uh, also with FDA with the same office, no? Tama? Same office. All right. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, thanks again, uh, Madam Chair. Um, on the reported violation of Rep Republic Act Number no. 11900 or the Vaporized Nicotine and Non-Nicotine Products Regulation Act, the FDA supports the proposed Senate uh, resolution of this August Chamber to look into the proliferation of vape products in the market that targets children and the youth. As the lead national regulatory authority for the regulation of health products, the Food and Drug Administration maintains its stand that vaporized nicotine and non-nicotine products and the novel tobacco products, just like traditional tobacco products, should be under the agency's jurisdiction due to the risk and potential human health impact of these products. Prior to the lapsing into law of the Republic Act RA number 11900, otherwise known as the Vaporized Nicotine and Non-Nicotine Product Regulations Act, the FDA, has already commenced regulation of these products pursuant to its vested mandate under RA's numbers 
9711 and 11467. However, due to the specific provisions set forth in RA 11900, the roles and responsibilities of the FDA, the agency's uh, involvement in the implementation of the provisions of the law is unfortunately limited to the following. Number one, uh, we provide assistance to the DTI in the development of the IRR, provide assistance to the DTI in the development of product technical standards, and number three, approval of um, vapors, VNNPs and NTPs with therapeutic medicinal or reduced risk claims. So the FDA has nonetheless reaffirmed its commitment, albeit with its very limited role to continuously work hand in hand with the DTI and other implementing agencies and offices in order to establish an effective regulatory framework for vaporized nicotine and non-nicotine products, its devices and other novel tobacco products pursuant to law. The FDA expresses its openness to working with the different offices and with our lawmakers to find ways to improve the existing laws and ensure the protection of the right to health of every Filipino from the potential health effects of these products. Rest assured that the FDA shall continue to develop and build its competency in relation to the regulation of tobacco products and the likes and will exhaust all available strategies to strengthen the current laws, policies, and regulations for the protection of public health. On behalf of our Director General, Dr. Samuel A. Zacate, we thank you for your continuous trust and support to the agency, and we look forward to working with your office for the improvement of the country's health regulatory system. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you. Um, what you've delivered now is uh, a summary no, of what is contained in that law with which both uh, Senator Joel, our majority floor leader, and I consider a, uh, uh, a law that is... Uh, that diminish no, the uh, the protective powers that the original law syntax had given. So you gave us a summary of that, uh, and I guess you touched on the rules itself. Um, thank you. So my question now is, uh, can you tell us how this law or this rule um, has in whatever way affected your work? Like when we now talk about, um, if you were to compare uh, what you normally take note of with other products that are harmful to health. Uh, ang, ang department mo is ulitin natin. Um, I mean, yung specific division mo is Center for Cosmetics, Household Urban Hazardous Substances, ha, ha, uh, Regulation and Research. So let's use, for example, cosmetics. Obviously, you would be very familiar with that, right? Yung cosmetics, i -re register sa inyo, right? And um, from my understanding, because I was a practitioner in FDA, nandiyan ako madalas, uh, baka grade school pa lang kayo noon, uh, that was my first job, uh, in one of my first jobs task in the law office that I worked with to assist our clients in getting their products registered. So I'm quite familiar with the process. May checklist yon, di ba? And over the years, uh, we have institution, uh, institutionalized and internationalized our practice, right? Such that... Uh, when you get a report that comes from, that's validated already in another FDA, and particularly, syempre, kung yung FDA na kinikilala na mga maayos, no? let's say U.S. product, uh, that is just basically documentary na lang ang process noon, right? You will not conduct your testing. Let the record show that uh, Ms. Cabrido is nodding her head, correct? Correct. So, basta masubmit nila lahat yon. wala na kayong testing na gawin because you take at face value na na ang uh, ibang FDA that had ruled upon this did their job. Correct? Yes, Madam Chair. Um, With cosmetics, Madam Chair, it's actually notification of the products. So, that's, what does that mean when you say um, notification? We are um with the ASEAN Cosmetics Directive. That is the agreement that... Uh, the, the 10 ASEAN that governs. Yes. And what is it? Explain to us. Because I want to use it 
I might use it as comparison. By the way, I keep forgetting to recognize the presence of uh, uh, Yusek Beverly Ho, who's joining us today. I'll give her the floor after FDA. Yes, Madam Chair. So, sabi mo nga, you are governed by this ASEAN? ASEAN Cosmetic okay, Directive, ASEAN Madam Cosmetic Chair. Directive, which says what? Which allows you to do what? Yeah, um, we um, acknowledge the notification that's being applied by our um, in the, uh, stakeholders. So, they apply for the notification and then the FDA acknowledges. But that notification tells you that they have already registered and gone, gone through the process in another ASEAN yes. country? Oh, they, kaya nga. They actually, so, the point is, wala namang, um, they, it's not that they are not, being, uh, they are not being regulated, but because of that agreement, you recognize uh, that they have gone through the process in another country. Yes. That's why notification, yes. correct? Okay, yes, so there is still a process that gives you uh, the confidence na dumaan na sa proseso ito. So if it's a contact lens that will go in the eyes, if it's a moisturizer facial cream that will go on the face, is it deodorant that goes under under a person's arm, you are notified, correct? Yes, sure. Okay. Uh, so normally, with a product, and now I'm going now to the vapes, right? If you will recall the position that this representation has taken, same with the majority floor leader, a product as defined by the FDA law is is should be registered with the FDA um, if it is harmful and if it could potentially cause have any effect on one's health. Uh, it has a claim that it has a good effect, therefore register it. It doesn't have any claims, but from your own uh, knowledge, from the wealth of knowledge that we have, uh, it will be exposed to our body parts, then uh, it has a health effect and therefore must go through some kind of process within the FDA, correct? Okay, uh, I'm saying this in layman's term, no? para maintindihan ng ating mga tagapakinig. And Dr. Yu, later on, please help me rin. Ano? Um, so, ang nangyari dito sa vapes na ini-inhale, ano ba yung sa Tagalog? Sinisinghot o nilalanghap? Hindi naman sinisinghot. <laughs> nilalanghap. Nilalanghap. <laughs> nilalanghap. O yan, yung ating bulakenyo. Nila, yung, yung, Nila for the record, yung nagsabing singot, ito, yung camera turo nyo dito sa staff ko. <laughs> Giisip pa ako, sinabi ko yung sinabi nila, more of nilalanghap, di ba? Nilalanghap yon Yung nilalanghap, yung nga yung pinaglalaban natin na, na kaya nga sa syntax law, sinabi natin na FDA will regulate, walang issue, done. Tapos dito sa bagong batas na ito, binaliktad, sinabi na DTI. O, umal saglit, nag-uusap si DTI, mamaya babalikan ko sila. Tatanungin ko sila, and uh, Dr. Yul, please help me out here. You can course the questions through me if you have. No? I I'll rely on you and the youth siguro. Eh, kayo rin, FDA na. Ibalik natin yung tanong, so paano nyo na-check yun? Kung yung nilalanghap nila, paano nyo na-check yun? Because I will reiterate, uh, and sinabi din to ni Majority Floor Leader when I delivered my speech, in the US FDA, more than 55,000 flavors were rejected kasi nga, it does not contribute to, uh, and, and I want to read it carefully, so I'll ask my team to, to show me the document. Pero hindi nga daw pumapasa sa standard, but there's a specific wording of the requirement of the US FDA. So hindi yan pumasa sa FDA, and here we are, our FDA has no authority to look into it based on the law that, that, that this bulok na law na napasa, uh, and um, uh, it's with DTI. So later on, because I gave DTI the opportunity to regroup and talk to, to each other, let's ask them how they are checking on that. No, uh, Is there anything else you'd like to say? Majo, baka may tanong ka? So I'm here to listen. Thank you, Madam Chair. Let's pass it on. Ito na. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. So just to be clear, yung sa 55,000 flavors that were rejected by the US FDA, uh, the marketing application for these 55,000 flavors were rejected for failure to provide evidence that they appropriately protect public health. Hindi nga lang na, hindi sila na-reject dahil lang hindi, hindi sila nakakasakit, but that they appropriately protect public health. Bagsak sila doon. So I will ask DTI later on, remind me, to ask, I will ask them how they're able to do that, no? Because uh, from what I know, eh, kayo ang may, ano, may um, competence to do that. And you have the competence to do that. May I hear the answer for that? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Anything else on your end? 
Sige, let's move along kasi with the time we have, I'd like to give everybody a chance to ano, to speak and then we can always set another hearing. Okay, so let's now go to DOH. Um, Yusek Ho, are you prepared to give any statement? Please yes, go ahead. The floor is yours. Thank you, ma'am. Um, good afternoon. The Department of Health is one with the Honorable Madam Chair and Majority Floor Leader in raising the urgent need to faithfully implement the regulatory aspect of the vape law. The DOH also reassures the Congress and the public that we will continue to work closely with relevant authorities in ensuring the implementation of the law by fulfilling our part. Our mandate specifically in timely issuing graphic health warnings, implementing campaigns on the harmful effects of smoking and vaping, as well as working with our civil society and development partners in building capacities of LGUs through our tobacco and vape free playbook, as well as providing some small grants for them to implement these. Finally, allow us to just reiterate, ma'am, our position that we need more stringent measures to protect Filipino youth from the harms of vape, heated tobacco products, and other tobacco products. This includes raising minimum age of accessibility, restricting flavors, advertising, promotions, and sponsorship, as well as transferring back um, the regulatory power of these harmful products to the FDA. Thank you very much, Paul. Thank you. Thank you very much for that, um, Yuseko. I am tempted to mention all the other things we are working on together, which uh, sadly um, negates, negates uh, takes away from the time that we have to spend on, uh, on problems like this because we're working uh, towards more protection of health and yet here we are needing to take valuable time, the time of the, the Honorable USEC, the time of... Uh, uh, DOH, uh, FDA, the time actually also of DTI na marami din pinoproblema sa ibang aspect ng uh, trade and industry because certain sectors cannot even self-regulate and cannot even um, uh, do their part no, in protecting the youth. Talaga namang tinarget pa talaga yung youth and I, I don't think there's any question there. Um, before I go to our I'm next here. speakers, thank yes, go ahead, go ahead, Majo. Just, just one quick question sa ating uh, USEC, ma'am, para kasi alam ko maraming nanonood sa ating mga kabataan. Just for the record again, just to put it on record, kasi yung vape products contain nicotine, right, ma'am? Yes, po. Opo. And uh, does DOH have uh, a data on nicotine addiction, ma'am, specifically itong vaporized nicotine among young people? Kasi napaka- Malaking uh, kalokohan at uh, pinakamalaking fake news ngayon sa larangan ng uh, health industry, yung vape ay okay at uh, hindi ito nakakasama at healthier. Yun yung word eh. So nakaka, ano, just to put that on record, ma'am, uh, pwedeng malaman kung may data po kayo dito sa nicotine addiction na dala ng uh, vaping. Um, sir, we do know from um, evidence no, na meron pong um, addiction, but we will provide the details um, to, for the record na lang po. Thank you Sige po. po. Siguro yung isa na lang po yung uh, in layman's term, ma'am, para dun sa mga nakikinig sa atin na kabataan, yung uh, uh, layman's term, uh, would our experts from uh, uh, DOH uh, uh, in layman's term uh, explain yung... Uh, a complex and dangerous process of nicotine addiction, especially sa ating mga kabataan? Okay po. Um, alam po natin no, na yung nicotine, um, ang ibig po sabihin ng addiction, ka, hindi mo na consciously kailangan isipin na gusto mo siyang gawin, di ba? Um, inherently, nawawire po yung utak natin na gustuhin yung something kahit alam natin na masama siya. No? So, nawawalan, parang nagsiskip na po yung utak natin para mamili kung tama ba to sa atin or hindi. And this is why um, we don't want to expose our youth um, to these kinds of products because um, some of them no may not be in a position yet to actually look at the facts and decide and yet no they're already under the power kumbaga, of these substances. Over, sir. At masama ito sa ating lang, sa ating baga. No? And uh, I remember when we were discussing this, uh, 
I think parang it reaches the brain uh, in about 10 seconds, ma'am. Is that correct? Uh, tama po yes. ba yung data na yun? Yes po. And then syempre po, no, yung the different carcinogens are also not just um, targeting the lungs, um, but uh, different parts of our body because they go into the bloodstream. Um, and more importantly, klaro din po sa atin no, na meron pong mga accidents din po na nangyayari no, out of using these um, instruments. So they're Thank not you. completely safe. Salamat ma'am at uh, klarong klaro na ito ay uh, produkto na hindi makakatulong sa kahit kaninong tao, ano man ang age mo, lalo na kung ikaw ay uh, kabataan. Kaya uh, this is definitely, Madam Chair, again for the record, a health concern. This is not just an ordinary product. Hindi po ito uh, snack, hindi po ito candy, kundi ito po ay isang produkto na makakasama sa ating kalusugan. Maraming salamat, uh, Madam Chair. Um, majority Floor Leader, please please um, bear with me. No, uh, In a minute, in about a minute, um, I will give the floor now to uh, Dr. Yul Doroteo. Uh, he is the Executive Director of Southeast Asia Tobacco Control Alliance. We've been working together for a de more than a decade already. He's a really expert. Um, he, can, he can recite the facts to us in his sleep uh, about nicotine addiction and the like. Uh, I'll give him the floor in a minute, as I said. No, And then we have our youth representatives pa. Senator Alan is also online. I'll acknowledge him. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm officially acknowledge him. You can take the floor. Wave at me, Al, uh, anytime that you're ready. But I wanted to take off very quickly lang from what uh, Dr. Yusek uh, Ho said. She was describing in layman's term what is an addiction, di ba? Senator Joel and I, we both have young kids, no? My son is 12, uh, around the age of your two kids then. Di nagkakalayo, di ba? And uh, I, I was telling my son about uh, my latest uh, um, uh, privileged speech on vapes. Now, I was just trying to see kung naaalala niya yung discussions ko with him uh, in the past uh, years. No? Kasi nag yan, I think he was probably 8 or 9, and he's now 12, very close to the age. In fact, in many countries, sadly siguro, pati sa Pilipinas, nag yan at that age. So I was just curious kung nagigets niya yung point ko. No? So this was over dinner with my two older daughters and my 12-year-old son. And I said, this was my speech. It was about vapes, that it's very dangerous because it can, it's bad for you and it becomes addictive. And I said, uh, do you know about it? And do you have friends who are, who are doing this? Do you know it's bad for you? And my son's answer was this, mom, do you think I'm dumb? And I was like, no, I don't think you're dumb. Precisely why I'm asking you if you understand my topic because you're old enough to understand. Then he repeated, do you think I'm dumb? And I said, no, then why do you have to ask me that? And then I said, you know what? It's this golden age where they listen to their parents' path. <laughs> na kung sinabi kong bad yan for you, for him, bad yan, sinabi mo ng bad. That's why he asked me that. Because when I remind him of homework, he's like, I got it, I know. But we do know from history, from time immemorial, and the youth is here, that at some point you get you you start listening to what your friends are saying, you start getting uh, more attracted to what what is out there, what is attractive to you. And that isn't that precisely the nature of what addiction can be, the problems that it can give us. Because in your head, you know that it's bad. You know that it's not good for you. Alam mo na eh. Alam mo na. Narinig mo na from your parents, narinig mo sa teacher mo, narinig mo sa doktor mo, narinig mo. But mo pa rin ginawa? Epe, peer pressure, and then eventually nga, you get addicted. So yun yung purpose na inaabala natin, Senator Joel, kasi nga, nakikinig sana sa atin ang parents, nakikinig sana din sa atin ang mga youth leaders, ang mga kabataan, mismo our own kids, um, that are still in that precious age that they take what are that we say as golden. It's bad for you, therefore iiwas ako. But we know for a fact that at some point in your teenage life, uh, you start listening to these other things and then you make that one wrong step and then you can get hooked. So that's the whole point of this. Anyway, so on that note, thank you. Let me now go to our last two resource persons. Like I said, a three papala. Sorry, sorry, yes. Three resource persons uh, I introduced earlier from SIATCA. I mentioned Dr. Yul Dereteo, the executive director. After that, we have our youth representative. And then we have from the Philippine College of Chess Physicians, Dr. Mateo, uh, who, will, who will join us virtually. So go ahead, uh, Dr. Yul. Maybe you can add a little more details to the questions of Senator Joel as well. 
Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Um, so I don't have everything memorized. I can't recite from my sleep. So I'm looking at the, the GYTS, Global Youth Tobacco Survey, from my computer. And the results <clears throat> from 2019 actually say that 14.1% of students aged 13 to 15 are currently using electronic cigarettes. You know? So that's 20, almost 21% of boys yes, uh, in the Philippines. In the Philippines. Okay, can you repeat that, please? Um, about 14.1% of students aged 13 to 15 years old are currently using electronic cigarettes. 13 to 15? Yes, as of 2019. You know? That's the latest survey. And that's 21, almost 21% of boys and 7.5% of girls. So it's quite alarming um, because in addition to the addiction you know, that is caused, um, so maybe I'll explain a little about um, how the addiction happens to the developing brain. Um, we know that the brain is developing from the uterus, uh, even before the child is born, all the way until the mid-20s. And currently, we say the cutoff is around 25 years old. So the brain is continually developing. And the part of the brain that we are most concerned with is what is called the prefrontal cortex. Ito pong nasa harap po, nasa likod ng ating uh, forehead. No? And this is the part of the brain that controls our impulse and our decision-making, as well as our... Um, control of our feelings, our emotions. So if that is affected, then it becomes very easy to become addicted not only to the nicotine, but to other substances. And that's why we say, <clears throat> excuse me, that's why we say that smoking is sometimes a gateway to other substance abuse, whether that's alcohol or illegal drugs. Um, and it may be the same for gambling, um, internet and other uh, activities. Um, and because the brain is still developing in the teenage years until the mid twenties, this is the time that the brain is very susceptible to nicotine. So this is also the age that the tobacco industry targets young people so that they become hooked to the nicotine and then become their customers for the rest of their life because it is hard to quit nicotine. In addition to the nicotine addiction, there is also the problem of uh, negative effects on our intelligence, our IQ, and our EQ, our emotional quotient as well. So um, there are studies showing that um, children who are born to mothers who were smokers um, or had fathers who were smokers uh, while they were in the womb uh, had lower IQ and also had poor impulse control in their later years in life. Um, you know, when they were teenagers and older. So it's a huge problem um, that has a wide range of implications, not just for health, but also for the future of our country. So I'll, put, I'll stop at that. Um, I was also asked to comment about how tobacco products are evolving. You know, what is the upcoming trend? And it's very hard to predict what the tobacco industry is planning to do. But let me give you a quick overview of the product history of, for the tobacco industry. You know? And we'll go back to the 1880s um, because since that time until the present, it's all about innovation for the tobacco industry. Like any other industry, to survive, you have to innovate. And so at this point, I would say that we should stop calling products novel products. You know, because at some point, these are no longer novel. They are only novel when, we, when they are first introduced. And all of the products, starting from unfiltered cigarettes to the cig filtered cigarettes in the 50s, mentholated and um, free-based nicotine cigarettes in the 60s, light, mild, and low-tar cigarettes with filter ventilation in the 60s, slim cigarettes targeting women in the 60s, flavored cigarettes in the 70s, the search for safer cigarettes in the 80s and 90s, the invention of the modern e-cigarette in 2003, the introduction of flavored capsules in filters since 2007, and the um, commercialization of nicotine salts 
which is a variation of free-based nicotine, to make nicotine less irritating and more inhalable, um, and even improved, quote-unquote, improved filters um, because they're firmer or recessed. All of these are actually intended to attract new customers, to maintain the addiction of customers, to justify premium prices, to circumvent regulation, and to misleadingly suggest that some products are less harmful than others. Um, Madam Chair, I'm being given the Time's Up sign. Um, I, I override your Time's Up sign. Okay, thank you, Madam Chair. So um, these are all ways that the tobacco companies are manipulating nicotine with uh, additives, so chemical additives and flavors. And this is primarily to reduce the harshness and improve the taste of the smoke and to increase the absorption of nicotine and therefore make them more addictive. So cigarettes today are actually more addictive than they were 50 years ago. There are also others, other cigarette-like products like cigars, cigarillos, blunts, pipe tobacco, cretex and BDs, and water pipe, known by, also by shisha, hookah, nargil, hubble bubble, these are heated forms of tobacco that are filtered through water. Uh, and then, of course, um, the subject of today, heated tobacco products and electronic nicotine delivery systems or e-cigarettes. And then there are also smokeless products or oral products. You know, and this includes snuff or nasal snuff. Ito po yung sinising hot. Uh, and then chewing and dipping tobacco, which is put into the mouth. Snooze, which is um, put between the teeth, the gums, and the side of the, and the cheek. And then nicotine pouches, nicotine lozenges, nicotine toothpicks. Um, these are all new products, um, supposedly new, but actually are innovations that have been in place actually for many years. Now, not just the past few years, but even a, a decade or more. So... I would really caution our regulators from saying that these are novel products because they are not novel. Um, the industry likes to present them as novel so that they can escape regulation. And actually the industry then says, oh, we should be part of the development of product standards. We should be part of the regulation that is developed because we know our products. Let me just point out that technical standards for cigarettes, tobacco products, e-cigarettes, heated tobacco products by the International Electrotechnical Commission, IEC, and the ISO, International Standards Organization. These are heavily influenced by the tobacco companies. Okay? Um, I can give you a publication that outlines um, how the industry manipulates these organizations to its benefit. And if I were to recommend a way to develop product standards for health, it should be through the health ministry, the FDA, and other health authorities. Okay. Um, and so it is uh, actually quite unfortunate for us in the Philippines that the genie has been let out of the bottle because of the bad vape law. Um, so it'll be hard to put the genie back in. But let's, uh, like uh, our dear senators have said, it is what it is. So I think it is incumbent on us as citizens and to point out that we actually uh, look to the government to implement the law um, as strictly as possible, especially when public health is concerned. So we are one with Senator Caetano and uh, others who are calling for the immediate recall and seizure of these products. They should be confiscated. It makes no sense for, for us to say that the government is warning violators when the violation is uh, prima facie evidence-based. Um, and let me also lastly point out that um, I heard from the DTI that uh, they thought that um, products without text warnings are in violation of the law. The law actually requires graphic health warnings, po, no? not just text warnings. So I hope that is also taken into consideration. Thank you very much. I. I overheard quickly the, the mention, and I was happy that they mentioned, but I was thinking, like, did I not hear it correctly? Because it's graphic health warning. And for the record, Senator Jingoy also mentioned that that uh, he wanted to be sure that, that the graphic health warning is covered. And we covered that in the law, and therefore, 
uh, DTI should cover that in their um, in everything, no, in all the violations that are being monitored. Thank you, thank you, um, Th Doctor. Thank you, Yul. Senator. Um, if if I may later on, if you wish um, to ask about any possible um, future amendments to strengthen the law, we also have uh, um, a statement to provide. Thank you. The Yes, we can do that. Um, FDA, did, did you actually, are you prepared to also provide your wish list of amendments to the law? Are you prepared? Um, we will prepare the, the, uh, uh, we will identify, um, Madam Chair, and we will provide. Anyway, because I see Mr. Miraflor is nodding his head, so it doesn't have to be exhaustive. No, I mean, I think uh, it's quite clear later on, uh, depending on the, on the time that we have left, I can go back to you because uh, I, I did want you to, um, in the same way that DTI laid out to us the process that they go through, which made me realize na wow, ang haba ng prosesong yan, uh, hindi man lang kayo nagko-confiscate. And then, Kayo, I wanted to uh, ask you for examples because I know for a fact, uh, nagko confiscate Kayo. Pag yung mga plain view din, nakakapag confiscate Kayo. And let the record show that the three representatives of FDA are all nodding their head. No, nakapag confiscate Kayo. So, ngayon, ewan ko sa inyo DTI, but hindi kayo nagko confiscate. We'll go to that uh, briefly later on. But I, did, did you want to say something now? Go ahead. Uh, Madam Chair, I forgot that there was one point um, about uh, acute poisoning, um, and um, this is for implementation of the current law. Um, we know that nicotine is a poison, especially when taken in large doses, and because we are the subject of today's flavors, you know, um, flavors and colors are very uh, attractive to children, and so if um, they get a hold, if very young children get a hold of these products and drink them by mistake, uh, they may have seizures and eventually die. So um, I wonder if um, the DTI has a poisons um, hotline that can be contacted in relation to this. Thank you. Well, I won't go, pero yung mga proponents ng batas na to ginawa nila lahat DTI. So paano pag tumawag sa inyo? Sasaklolohin nyo yung namamatay na? Binigay nila sa lahat lahat eh. So jurisdiction daw sa inyo din. So I won't go, pag may tumawag, tell me later on how you will in how you intend to handle that. Because uh, there are reported cases, as I've said, and I'll read it on record later on that yun nga, yung sa UK pa lang uh, naaabala sila sa dami ng youth na na-hospital. And uh, with um, uh, do you have the raw number of that pala? Um, what is 14% of 13 to 15 year old? Do you have any idea how much that is? Can we kind of try to extrapolate that? Okay, thank you. Can we now go to our youth representatives? We have with us Miss Leanda Marie Garcia uh, she is a multimedia artist for from Action for Economic Reforms, and we have Mr. Lorenzo Gabriel Verano, Youth for Syntax. Are you both going to speak, or just just Mr. Verano? Okay, go ahead. Thank you for being here. Alangas na loob nyo. Nung ganyang idad ako, kakabahan ako humarap sa ano. So I honor you for being here. Thank you, Pao, Madam Chair. Um, good afternoon, Madam Chair, Majority Leader, fellow resource speakers and guests. I am Lorenzo Verano, a former student leader representing the Youth for Syntax Movement, the, the youth arm of the Syntax Coalition. Since 2012, we have been at the forefront of the youth movement, advocating for legislation that protects the health of the youth by increasing taxes on harmful products such as tobacco and e-cigarettes. It's no secret that young people are the main victims of e-cigarette smoking. I can attest to this. In Kainta, you can see a multitude of children as young as 10 years old casually vaping on the streets. Maniwala man kayo sa hindi, ginagastos nila yung pamasko nila, hindi sa, mga, hindi sa laruan, pero sa mga vape products. Clearly, vape companies market their products towards the youth and sadly, their marketing tactics are working. In 2019, Global Youth Tobacco Survey found that one in seven Teenagers in the Philippines aged 13 to 15 are using e-cigarettes. A study by the Philippine Pediatric Society showed that among 7th to 9th graders, 6.7% have tried and are using e-cigarettes. Given its accessibility, variety of flavors, and the belief that it is safer than tobacco. As a result, in 2019, the very first case reported of Evali in the Philippines was a 16-year-old girl who had to be admitted to the intensive care unit due to shortness of breath. 
Evidence also shows that these young people are easily lured by flavors. A study by Villanti published in 2017 showed that 81% of youth and 86% of young adult tobacco users reported that the first product they used was flavored versus 54% of adults aged 25 and above. Comparing flavored categories reportedly used in the past 30 days between adults and youth and the youth, the youth were significantly more likely than adults to report using an e-cigarette flavor like fruit than any other flavor and less likely to use flavors like menthol or mint. Now that Republic Act 11900 has repealed the two-flavor restriction in the syntax law, the provision prohibiting the sale of vaporized nicotine and non-nicotine products and novel tobacco products that are packaged, labeled, presented, or marketed with flavor descriptors that are proven to unduly appeal, particularly to minors, must be strictly implemented. These provisions are intended to protect our youth from being enticed by these products. And yet, among the first results to pop up when you search for vape juice on Shopee include How How, Yakult, Nerds, Cheesecake. These clearly appeal to children. We call, we call on the Department of Trade and Industry to strictly regulate these flavors to adhere to the wording in RA11900. If the industry insists that vape products are necessary to help cigarette smokers quit, why market them to non-smoking, unknowing innocent children? We witnessed how the cigarette epidemic took millions of lives from our fellow countrymen. It has led to a loss of productivity and a decline in Filipinos' quality of life. Let's not allow the epidemic of vaping to claim more lives. Let's give our youth those 10-year-old children playing along the streets of Kenta a chance to live healthier lives. Ang kabataan ng pag-asa ng bayan, kaya tinaanurahan namin ang bayan na protektahan ng ating kabataan. Thank you very much for that, Mr. Lorenzo Gabriel Verano. Um, let me now call on Philippine College of Chess Physicians, Dr. Imelda Mateo, who's the president of the said uh, organization, there you are. Welcome, and uh, the floor is yours, uh, Doctora. So, good afternoon, Honorable Senator Pia Cayetano. So we're one with you, and we're grateful that you are always our strong ally in the ad advocacy on, of course, the fight against tobacco smoke and, of course, vaping, which is the latest trend now. And we've been doing us in the Philippine College of Physicians has always been have always been staunchly against the transfer of jurisdiction and oversight of the use of tobacco and vape products to and removing it from the mandate of FDA, knowing in fact that it is used you know, for human consumption. And I agree with you, how can DTI do and address the medical concerns if they are not under the Department of Health for emergency cases? And in fact, we've seen a, a number of cases already with devastating outcome with the use of bait by, by the youth. Now, personally, I've the last person, the last patient I had is a 21-year-old pre-med student who used to be a smoker, but recently shifted to vape because of the false claim that it is less harmful. And I was so disappointed that he believed that and got a little scolding from me, knowing he's a pre-med student. He ramped up the use of vaping especially during exam period, and turned out to have um, early, for his age at 21, the effect of like a COPD um, con condition of bula. What's bula? Bula is like when a portion of your lung has expanded into a balloon, and it's very catastrophic when it bursts or it uh, pops out or pag pumutok po, because the air will push your lung and will have you uh, difficulty of breathing and sometimes fatal to the uh, full compromise of the function of your lungs. No? Number two is, of course, adjusting it to age below 21 years old, of course, because we know how the tobacco industry, how the vape industry work, they would want to manipulate the minds of our youth. And I would not expound on this because Dr. Yul Doroteo, who I have been or we have been working closely with have explained some of the reasons and um, rational why. Uh, I come from Philippine College of Chess Physicians. So we are the partners of the Department of Health in addressing lung health. No? 
of course, health in general, but specifically on the concerns of lung diseases. And we've seen a lot, a number of increased cases of premature COPD for our patients who are vape users and smokers in the early age. Uh, for a smoker, the usual late sequela is seen at the age of 50 and above. But with vaping, we've seen, as I have stated earlier, a case of less than 30 years old. In fact, the youngest rec recorded user of vape is 16 years old who had to be intubated and they couldn't identify the cause because the patient claimed that he's non-smoker, but they delved into the uh, medical history and found to have ramped up the use of vape for the past six months. And that's the catastrophic event. So now, of course, we are with you, Senator Kaitani. I, mean, I was listening how, and it's so disappointing that we already have the law while it has been tampered or um, that has been um, watered down. But what about the agency in charge? Is it only implementation, but implementation without execution and without police control? Who, I have one question, Senator. Who does the policing? Is it the same agency? Is it still DTI? Is that their jurisdiction or their uh, mandate? Because they took the responsibility of looking after the health of the Filipinos with the issue on vape. So that's number two of my concern, Senator. And we're so disappointed, of course, in the medical side, specifically the PCCP. We have reiterated our stand on this, of course, um, supporting still, if there will still be any intervention for the jurisdiction and oversight on vape and other tobacco products to be still transferred to the, to the FDA, because these are products that have been used and are for use in health, or it is taken in to the human body. You know? So anything about uh, any product that is taken in by the human body or used no? in consumption by the human should be under the FDA. Um, I think I am not prepared to have a speech, but I had to share our experiences, how we've seen the ill effect. And the basis of this, I, Dr. Yule has already, already reiterated, the same products, detrimental products and chemicals of a cigarette stick or the cigarette um, pack is the are the same products and chemicals contained in the vape. No? Pero hindi nila declare ito lahat. But of course, definitely meron pong nicotine. And in fact, they wouldn't leave nicotine out of those chemicals because this is the addicting component of that product or of that device. And true, um, it is nicotine in the liquid form is fatal if taken in large amount. And we know that the liquid used in vape are the concentrated nicotine products. In fact, 30 to 60 milligrams or even less is, can be toxic or fatal. And you would imagine that one ml of the concentrated nicotine and its equivalent in one joule or in one fixed pod. So you are talking about two packs of cigarette in one pod at any one time, which utilizes 1.5 ml of that nicotine, which is 5% nicotine by volume. So that means it's really concentrated. And that's we are enticing our youth to use. No? And that is the reason why there's premature end effect or catastrophic effect on the lungs. Um, I'm here, Senator, in case you still have any questions as far as the ill effects, catastrophic effect. And it's really sad that the last, the recent case is one from my colleague, Dr. Lenny Fernandez from PGH. And sad to say, um, I think, I'm not sure, Doc Ayusek Bebho, if we really have the statistics on the use of vape. We know the percentage, this is contained in the, um, the GATS report, the, the percentage of the youth using or on vape, but do we really have the statistics? and the detailed numbers or um, epidemiology of the use. Because we all know and should be um, accepted by all that smoking in itself is already considered a disease and it's already contained in international code of diseases. Much more vaping, which is a form of smoking. It's just using other chemicals or device other than cigarette stick. 
I guess I've said the more relevant uh, points from our point of view as long experts. And I agree with you, Senator Pia, the latest um, statistics or researches that have been done would say that there is really direct effect you know, of the vape chemicals on the lungs causing inflammation, causing popcorn lungs, uh, causing bronchiolitis obliterance or the, the accelerated COPD in the youth or in the younger age group. So Senator, I, I guess that's, I have said the more relevant aspects as far as the pulmonary health or lung diseases are concerned. Thank you, Po. Thank you very much, Dr. Mateo. I'll take off uh, from what you said. I think it was in the form of a question to uh, USEC, uh, Doc uh, Beverly Hono, um, on, on the data available. Uh, and I'm sure it's DOH who can, who can um, um, put into action no, this concern that we both have. How do we disseminate this? Uh, to all levels of healthcare, and Dr. Yul, I'll I'll ask you to if if I'm saying it correctly, no, um, for us to get the data, uh, yung kinuwento yung case, uh, clearly, uh, nakarating siya dun sa specialist who was able to document that properly and to diagnose it properly. But how many cases like this are diagnosed in the Barangay Health Center, in a, in a primary healthcare center? So I'd like to know from DOH. Uh, what protocols do we have in place? But that's just like disease reporting, it just so happens uh, to everyone that my team and I are also handling uh, the drafting of the bill of the CDC, you know, the Centers for Disease Control. So I know the language that is contained in that bill on the reporting of diseases, on the cascading of information. But I'd like to know that until the CDC is in place, kasama ba itong pagmomonitor ng uh, Ivali um, uh, ailment. Ayan, Dr. Hoy is there. Kasama bayon, or is, is that something that uh, we still have to do? Would you have the answer to that, um, Yusek Ho? Hi, ma'am. Can we have our director uh, from Health Promotion Bureau, see Director Rodley, because they're working on the surveillance uh, system. Pa. Sure, uh, sure. Pa. Is she with you? Ay, yeah, there, you're there. Okay, sorry, sorry. Uh, director Rodley. Ang haba ng pangalan mo, so yung font, eh, nag-squeeze-squeeze nag yung mga pangalan mo, Kazra. Karza. Yes. Director Rodley Karza, uh, OIC Director of Health Promotions. Sir, you have the floor. Good afternoon, Madam Chair. Um, currently, we're still working on the inclusion of Evali as part of um, the online uh, electronic injury surveillance system of our epidemiology bureau. So we're targeting to include uh, Evali to be part of our system, surveillance system this year. Um, but that's, I think, highlights, Madam Chair, the importance of having the jurisdiction under FDA because if they are registered under FDA and there are um, adverse events, they are responsible or they are directed to um, report these adverse events to the What's you right there, uh, DTI. So, paano? Uh, in FDA, it's embedded in their system that when you register, uh, the registration certification, the CPR that they give, uh, also has some um, uh, responsibilities on the side of the recipient, and that includes reporting of adverse effects. May ganyan kayo? Well, the product registration system for this, Madam Chair, is still being crafted. So, because of the transitory period, but okay. under our um, present system, because we have for mandatory products like construction materials, there are also um, reportorial requirements and audit and auditing of those um, manufacturers or importers. So, for the record, everyone, the entire Philippine population, kung ang jurisdiction ba e eh, na iwan sa FDA, wala na tayong time na we are still putting together, crafting the guidelines. Kasi may guidelines na sila. Nandun na yon. They've been doing it ever since we had an FDA, which, by the way, was called BFAD uh, in my time. And it was also during my time in 2009 uh, when we changed BFAD's name to FDA, and not just a change of name, but also strengthening of the functions of FDA. No? So for the record, 
all of this did not does, we, we would not have had to go to this process of we're still waiting we're still doing it because it would have been automatic with FDA because that is really what they do sadly no na na inako ng uh, DF ng DTI because of the law passed by Congress which I objected to uh, gave the jurisdiction uh, to you okay so just to clarify that go ahead thank you madam chair uh, at present we rely heavily on the conduct of um surveys sorry lang so kailan pala kailan kailan magiging available kailan tayo magkaka registration in the meantime walang registration there's no registration at this at this yeah. time for the record chair? then ano the syntax law that would have come into effect minadali nung mga uh, pro vapor and the uh, senators and members of Congress who support it. Minadali nila yun kasi magkakam into effect na ang, uh, ang syntax law that would have required registration. And that's why they were in a hurry uh, to pass this other law that would remove the jurisdiction para hindi pa rin sila nagre register and hindi pa rin sila nagko comply. Ganyan ang lobby na mga sin products dito sa Pilipinas. Ganyan ang kaawa awang situation natin. Anyway. Madam Chair, because the law has provided for a transitory period um, on that product. Oh, and for the record, and I don't mean to be rude by butting in, no, but you're reminding me of things. Nagkaroon ng transitory period na rin doon sa syntax. Binigyan na rin sila. Dr. Yul, do you remember? Did they have 18 months yata? They had 18 months na. 18 months. Tapos minadali itong bagong law kasi yung 18 months kulang pa sa kanila. Gusto pa nilang madagdagan. Ganyan talagang industry na ayaw magparegulate. Just letting you know, I know you're just trying to implement it, but I need the Filipino people to know that this is how these industries who do not want to be regulated, who don't care if Filipino people die, if young young people get addicted, they don't care, and they just want to go on and on and on unregulated, pretending that they want to be regulated, but they don't. Go ahead. Um, and Madam Chair, um, as me I mentioned earlier, that is why we are also in the process of promulgating the Philippine National Standard for novel tobacco products because for the others that are covered by the law, like um, the vape, we already have standards for that because the standard becomes the, the reference in the technical regulation, which will, which will but be... But what's the your business when you don't know? When, when, to my knowledge, the mandate of DTI has never been changed. You have nothing to do and you have no expertise in health. So how in the world are you going about changing, modifying, or creating that standard? How? How? Saan ang doktor? May dala ba kayong doktor? Wala po kami. Oh, e paano? So how are you creating these standards? Saan nyo hinuhugot yun? Actually, the standards, Madam Chair, for, for, um, for instance, for vape, it came from AFNOR, which is... France and there's also a standard that we adopted which comes from the British Standards Council so but we do not have a standard of yes. what um these are for the standard on um one of the I think it's the heated tobacco products madam chair and so for the for the novel tobacco products we do not have a standard yet and um in the technical regulations that DTI issues, it's always referenced on a standard. Who gave you those standards? Who told you to reference those standards? Um, it's the it's the Bureau of Philippine Standards that administers uh, that will administer the product certification. But who gave you this. those? Who gave you those? Um, yung France na standard. Who told you to use that as your standard? Well, it's the Standards Development Division of the Bureau of Philippine Standards, Madam Chair, that the because the BPS is the na uh, national standards body of the Philippines, so that um, and it, and and their expertise is in products that are harmful to to health, particularly lung health and uh, brain health. Um, Madam Chair, there's there's a technical committee, so it will depend on what standard is being developed. Yeah, give me the name of the people in the technical committee. Give me their names and their their profile, uh, including their their any any expertise that they have. Okay. Yes. Because sure. clearly, um, I think we have enough information. You can also do your own research, Naman Asek, no? Yes. Uh, this is a product that can kill. This is a product that can create a generation of addicts. Mm -hmm. And I would think it is incumbent upon you coming here to my Senate hearing to ensure that what you are reporting to me in your own conscience also is acceptable, no? Na 
history will tell us when we both look back, when we all look back, na humarap tayo sa hearing, kahit ako, nakinig ako sa inyo, I let you go, knowing that we all have done our best to promote the interests of the Filipino people. And when I say the Filipino people, not the industry, but teka muna, sandali, ang pangalan nyo is Department of Trade and Industry. So I am so confused how in your human brain, kaya nyong to ensure, assure us that you are here to protect Filipino health when your mandate and your name itself is the Department of Trade and Industry. This is not about you personally. It is just about my ongoing confusion with this whole situation. Kayo, estudyante, nung estudyante ako, ang assignment namin, what is DOH, Department of Health? What does it do? What is DTI, Trade and Industry? What does it do? Saan nakasulat doon? na involved in an obligation nila to protect health. And if I look at the roster, can you tell me now na andyan na yung expertise nyo sa health? Nagkaroon ba ever since we created this law? Madam Chair, um, we do not have the expertise on health. Um, we, we just also, um, of course, th there's a provision of law there when, whenever if the product registration system is already in place, if there are um, health, um, like, um, what's this? Um, there are claims of health or um, minimal yung risks, um, reduction of risks, that it will have to pass through the FDA first. Correct, before... but if they don't say anything, they don't claim any risk reduction, they don't claim any health benefit, Pero ito na, nag attract na ng youth. Uh, uh, the, the, the representative, the president from Philippine College of Chess Physicians says there are already documented cases of EVALI. And you already said for the record, you do not have the health expertise. So, Papano, how would you register? You're registering them on what basis? The basis that they are a 5 billion company, there are 5 million company. What, what is the basis? And yung katulad nung binigay nilang example ng cosmetics, uh, they, have, they, have the, they have a notification from another country that tells them na duman ito sa process. May ganon, that's why I wanted to know. And in the next hearing or TWG, kindly present these people from your Bureau of Standards, right? That you're telling me are the ones who determine what are the standards that you're now following. Because I don't know if your Bureau of Standards has any health expertise to determine, like I told you, 55,000 55, flavors in the U.S. were rejected by the FDA. Tell me how you will do that. And while you're waiting to, to put together all your rules and all your, your, the time that you need to put together your processing, how many will die? How many will get addicted? But let the record show that you already said that you do not have the expertise. I will repeat what is the DTI mandate uh, from the time I have started questioning, not DTI, uh, and this is what I know it to be. Correct me if I'm wrong. Responsible for realizing the country's goal of globally competitive and innovative industry and services, sector that contribute to inclusive growth and employment generation. Sanjay ng health. Wala, diba? That's why you answered the way you answered, no? So I'm sorry if I'm very, I seem very frustrated, but I am frustrated. I am very frustrated. Do you want to add anything else? Madam Chair. Okay, thank you. Um, and th I thank you for being participat participative and, and being candid with your responses, no? Uh, my, my frustration is not directed at you personally. It's just directed at this terrible situation that we find ourselves in. Pretty much, para mo na rin sinabi na the law was created, binigay sa inyo, wala ka naman choice kundi, kundi gampanan yung, yung, yung sinabi ng batas na gampanan nyo, no? Pero wala nga kayong expertise in that field. And for such a, a dangerous uh, product which can cause um, immediate uh, uh, illnesses in, in young people and older people, nakakagulat lang that it is now in your hands, no? Um, I would also like to point out uh, to everyone, and I'll give then the floor to you, anyone. I need to wrap this up actually 10 minutes ago, but um, let's let's uh, try to move along. Uh, I just want to emphasize that um, in a recent report, let me see if I can find it in my phone.
send you a letter, let the one you sent me on the ice powers you need. Where was that place? Hmm? Ah, it was yours. Okay. So um, I'm just reading from a news article, Business World. Uh, this was dated a year, almost, not even a year ago, three months ago, October 24. Business World reports that DTI seizes uncertified products in Pampanga and Paranaque City. So I read this, I went through it quickly, and these products um, are uh, construction uh, materials and automotive vehicles, uh, including tires, tires for automotive vehicles. Nakakatuwa, pero nakakagulat na ang construction materials and um, uh, tires for vehicles, gulong, pwedeng ma-confiscate. <laughs> pero yung, uh, yung produkto na makakamatay ng bata, hindi nyo kino-confiscate. And uh, I know this is probably not your jurisdiction. No? There's another agency that handles ang CDs and DVDs. Kino-confiscate. Pero itong mga e-cigs na, na, na clearly violating the law, I don't think there's anyone here, and kindly raise your hand if you object. I think everyone here agrees, right? The law is very clear. E-cigarettes and vapes that are targeting the young people or the youth or children, particularly those ha that have fruits, cartoons, desserts, candies, are prohibited, no? And uh, let the record show ASEC, Kabochan is nodding her head. O tapos, yung DVDs, yung gulong ng kotse, pwedeng ma-confiscate ito, hindi kino-confiscate. So, I think that's very clear. And earlier, I read in the record, the Supreme Court, uh, the, the, the latest Supreme Court jurisprudence on the plain view doctrine. Okay? So, if I may uh, kindly... I hope you take this well. May I request that you work with DILG? Isang kalabit lang naman yan sa mga mayor, na sabihin nyo sa mga mayor na before you have another epidemic on hand of addicted young people, ano ba naman you ask the mayors to ask their health officers, to ask whoever to go around, even the Parent Teachers Association, to check what stores that are within 100 meters, even 200 meters, but the law says 100 meters, if I'm not mistaken, right? And I, I fought for a, a farther distance. Kung nagbebenta nun, di bawal, sinabi nyo na you found, eh paano pa isa-isa tayo? So talk to DILG. I, I bumped into the secretary last week. I will tell him, no? Sama nyo na yan sa mga... Pa-request isang tinginan lang naman nila, they will know that there are violations. I can tell you for a fact that in Taguig City, I can ask our mayor and so many other of my friends in Metro Manila and all over the world na tingnan nyo nga to, and right away they will act. Hindi nila, pw pwede nilang i-revoke yung business permit because they are selling products that is that are illegal. Correct? Am I wrong? Ang dali naman gawin eh, pero yun nga, and I know you have a lot of work, but this is as important, if not more important, than other products because this will create an epidemic of addicted and probably lung-damaged children. Okay? So let me know in the next hearing what, what you have done about it because I'm just really very concerned. Ay, nako. Anyway, okay, Dr. Yule, so in interest of time, can you give us a brief um, statement on your recommended amendments? And then FDA, if you want to just candidly mention a few, but I will give you time. Of course, you can also hand in. And kayo rin, DTI, no? Ano, ano yung nakikita nyo? Thank you. And then DOH, no? Also DOH. Kayo nang bahala, no? Thank you, D Director Karza. Yes, Dr. Yule. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, the long-term ideal um, outcome we want is actually to phase out and ban these products if that were possible like we have done with unleaded fuel you know, which we thought in the past would be impossible but happened so i don't see it as an impossibility that we can phase out these harmful products um, in the future dr in, yul can yes. you please put on record what they have done is it new zealand new zealand where they they decided that every child born this yes, year um, and onward will never be able to purchase uh, cigarettes. Never smoke because they will never be able. So let's put that on record officially. Yeah, so th that's called the uh, um, 
smoke-free generation provision of the New Zealand Amendment to its tobacco control law. And um, anyone who becomes 18 um, will no longer be allowed to be sold any tobacco product um, so for the rest of their life. You know? So it's not an infringement on their right because they never had that right in the first place to purchase tobacco products. Um, unfortunately, it does not cover e-cigarettes, um, but we are seeing that there is an uptick of uh, e-cigarette use among the youth in New Zealand, so that may change in the future. You know? um, Compared to what I noted in the UK, no, they, they, I was there when they informed me that they're not really worried about the youth. And then here we are three and a half, four years after they had that conversation, we had that meeting. I, I'm reading the reports that say that they're now alarmed yes, with, the, with the number of uh, youth that uh, are uh, addicted and, and have actually been hospitalized due to Ivali. Yes, um, and in the UK, it, the increase is actually also coupled to their um, lack of restriction on advertising, which they have the government has now identified as a loophole um, because the industry is allowed to advertise uh, e-cigarettes, particularly online. Um, but for in our case, po, um, just a few um, broad strokes in terms of uh, possible amendments to the current law, um, we would actually recommend banning anything that is attractive to young people. So that includes flavors and additives. Um, and also to introduce standardized packaging, whereby we remove the attractive colors, attractive scents, uh, attractive surfaces of packaging, and any other packaging features that may be attractive. Also to prohibit marketing of these products, particularly online, because that is where our youth spend much of their time. Increasing the excise taxes on these products, because we know that there is a much lower tax rate that is levied on these products compared to cigarettes and other tobacco products. And finally, to raise the minimum age to 25, which is the cutoff for adolescent brain development, so as to reduce the risk of nicotine addiction. And if it pleases the legislature, um, also to ban sales to anyone born after they reach the age of 25. Um, to ban the sales of uh, of any of these tobacco and nicotine products to anyone born after they reach 25. I understand 25 is not the age of majority in the Philippines, but uh, the law does allow for exceptions to the um, majority age rule. Um, and uh, in this case, if we are to be science-based, evidence-based, the science tells us that maturity of the adolescent brain happens at age 25. Thank you, Your Honor. Who else wants to add? Did you want to add FDA? Thank you, Madam Chair. Actually, it's somewhat similar to what uh, Dr. Yule has already um, enumerated, but again, um, if if the regulations will be back to FDA, again, uh, we will um, be on the restrictions at 21, if possible po, kung pwede 25, if kaya po, pwede rin pong uh, 25 years old. And then, of course, yung selling po near the schools, na, na capture naman po ito. And then, of course, yung increase in taxes, ban on disposable devices due to environmental concerns also, Madam Chair. And what was the last? Um, Are the disposable? Yes, yes, Madam okay. Chair. Madam Chair, if I may, last intervention lang. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead, Majo. Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. Just to also put on record that uh, this representation was against the uh, lowering of age, yung 18, no? Uh, we voted and uh, proposed yung 21. And uh, I agree, kung pwede 25, mas maganda. Dahil nakita natin kanina hanggang uh, 25 yung age na nakakasira ng brain at iba pang mga health hazards, uh, Madam Chair. At the same time, also wanted to put on record during the uh, uh, interpolations of this particular measure, this representation uh, raised that 100-meter uh, 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 distance yung uh, ng selling nito, pati promotion, pati promo girls na hanggang ngayon meron pa rin. Uh, and it's not just for school, but uh, for places where our young people actually uh, uh, go to 
uh, tumatambay at uh, nag, na, nagtutrup dun sa lugar na yon Bawal talaga dapat yan. So I hope ma-strengthen din po yun. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Maraming salamat sa ating, uh, ating mga resource persons. Thank you very much, uh, Majority Floor Leader. Thank you for staying for the whole hearing. Uh, your presence is much appreciated. Uh, it doesn't feel like such a lonely journey when I see you there. Uh, and this is not the end, obviously. Uh, this is just beginning again for this uh, 19th Congress. Uh, we hope to be able to work with, with everyone, all the concerned sectors, including DTI, of course, to come up with uh, suggestions and uh, possible amendments to the law that will be truly reflective of uh, the protective measures that we want to see, not just for the youth, but for the entire uh, Filipino people. So on that note, um, this hearing will be uh, suspended. Uh, we will digest all the materials that we have. We have requested for further materials from DTI, uh, even from uh, uh, any, any other submissions from everyone. Uh, and then we probably will have another hearing or a TWG. Thank you everyone for taking the time uh, to be with us this afternoon. Salamat and uh, be safe for the rest of the day and the week and happy Valentine's.